This is Future Tech, where each week we discuss the good, the bad, and the ugly of where tech is headed in 2023 and beyond. Surprise, surprise, we are back to talk more AI this week. Blake Montgomery joins us as deputy editor over at Gizmodo. And Blake, we have so much to break down this week. Uh, let's just start with uh, one of the bigger ones, BARD, right? It was released to the, to the GA, the general uh, yeah. audience. Yeah, you, <laughs> me, and everybody else can now use Google's ChatGPT competitor, BARD. It's a chat bot. You might have used it already. Google has been prompting users to sign up for it. Uh, they're adding AI to Gmail and Google Docs, and BARD is its own like conversational assistant. You talk to it. It's a little less weird than ChatGPT getting added to Bing, if you'll remember. Uh, it was saying that its name was really Sydney. It had really strange hallucinations. BARD is much more toned down, much more BARD kind is of like, I'm the business. App. Yeah, but Google is like, we don't want things to look weird. We want to clamp down on anything strange or aberrant that Bard might say. And so it is quite useful. And it is, you probably, you've experienced something like it using ChatGPT before. It's not so different. But I think, I mean, Google is much, Google search is much more popular than Bing. And so this marks a watershed moment of AI getting released to an even larger swath of the population. Like, ChatGPT has 100 million users, they say, and Google search has, what, billions? Multiple billions? It's the most yeah, popular site on the web. So, yeah. so this is a big, it's a big moment. Okay, so that, those efforts were in an effort to not be weird, but we did see kind of a weir weirder rollout of some AI this week. Text to video uh, rolled out, which, you know, it was pretty cool to see. Yeah, it's really interesting, and it's in that early stage. You know, the, those first AI-generated images that you saw that were sort of like, they had the weird hands, the teeth are kind of strange, the eyes might not quite be level. Like It was like a Simpsons episode from like the 90s. Remember, the, the animation was a little wonky. Yeah, and text-to-video is in that stage right now. You look at the video and you're like, I can see something's off. Like, this is actively quite strange, but it is, you can now, uh, with several different kinds of generators that we've written about, you can give it a text prompt, give the AI a text prompt, and generate three, around three seconds of video of anything you really want. Except for hands. It seems like the AI just can't get hands right. I mean, what's what's the explanation? Do we know? The things that I've read about that basically come down to, it's hard to render hands, even for human artists. And so, I think that's it. For me, it's the teeth. They always weird me out in AI. They're always too many. Remember when Sonic the Hedgehog's teeth weirded everybody out? <laughs> yeah, like in the it looked, They looked like real, like veneers. They were like, no, no. Yeah, it's it it like on a strange furry hedgehog. He shouldn't have like human teeth and kind of tiny human eyes. Yeah, I hated that. Um, you know what else we saw this week is we actually saw Stanford's kind of version of uh, Meta's. Uh, right, AI be taken down, alpaca? Mm -hmm. We saw some Stanford researchers generate a copy, so more or less, of Meta's large language model, which is called Llama, which has not been released to the public. It has been leaked on 4chan, and some people have started to mess around with it there. But we saw these researchers kind of generate a copy for pretty low cost, it was around $600, which compared to Microsoft has made supercomputers that are estimated to be tens of millions of dollars to train AI, uh, like ChatGPT for OpenAI. And so the fact that they could generate this, it was a team of about 10 people. It's really small, it's really low cost. They ended up taking it down because the researcher said we don't have adequate safeguards, which is very responsible. Um, and so it just is showing that AI is like proliferating further and further and further and eventually there will be a lot of different like homespun AIs. Yeah, no, it's interesting to um, to watch it all unfold. Uh, also, I mean, anything else this week that you want to talk about? I know uh, Adobe, I believe, even released something. Yeah, there were a couple more moments of big blue chip tech companies releasing AI. So Adobe released an image generator. That seems fairly standard at this point. There are a lot of image generators. Shutterstock released one in January. Um, the other big moment was also image, image related. Microsoft, which has integrated ChatGPT into Bing Search, like just for text, is adding the Dolly image generator, which is also made by OpenAI, into Bing Image Search. So now you'll be able to prompt Bing to generate an image in the same way that you would like go to Dolly and say, I want an image of like a ponytail that runs down the castle like Rapunzel. Um, we made, what did we I'm make the other, what did we make the other day when we were writing about it? I think it was a monkey as a cosmonaut running through a field of blue bonnets. It did pretty well. <laughs> I'll have to go look for that. All right, of course, a lot going on in the world of AI. For more stories on AI, check out gizmodo.com.
Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and check out other Gizmodo videos here on YouTube.